Hello, and welcome to the My Heritage webinar series. I'm Jeff Rasmussen, your host, and I'm broadcasting to you live from Middleton, Idaho. And today we have Lisa Louise Cook with us, who is live in the great state of Texas, for her class, Fabulous Photo Discoveries at My Heritage. Thanks to Lisa, and thanks to the more than 1,700 of you from 34 countries around the world for registering for the live webinar, uh, wherever and whenever you are, glad to have you with us. I'd like to introduce today's speaker, Lisa Louise Cook. Uh, Lisa is the producer of the Genealogy Gems podcast, the popular and long-running genealogy podcast, which has been downloaded over 3 million times. The podcast is available up at genealogygems.com, the Genealogy Gems app, and all major podcast streaming services. She also hosts the YouTube Live video series, Elevenses with Lisa, at the award-winning Genealogy Gems YouTube channel. A sought-after international and keynote genealogy speaker, she makes genealogy education fun and inspiring, whether in person or online. Lisa is the author of four books. I've got them here on the screen for you. The Genealogist Google Google Toolbox. <laughs> Say that five times real fast. The Genealogist Google Toolbox, third edition. Mobile Genealogy, How to Find Your Family History in Newspapers, and Genealogy Gems. Other works include the popular Evernote for Genealogist Quick Reference Guide and the video tutorial series Google Earth for Genealogy. She also produces the Family Tree Magazine podcast, writes the Lisa's Picks column for the magazine, and is an instructor and curriculum developer for Family Tree University. Please put together your virtual hands and let's give my good friend Lisa Louise Cook a nice warm webinar welcome. Hi Lisa and welcome to the show. Hi, Jeff. It's great to be back here at Legacy. Anytime Jeff asks me to, to come on over, I'm here. Well, and anytime Lisa's on the show, I'm there. <laughs> well, and today, photo discoveries at my heritage. Really looking forward to it, Lisa. And uh, yeah, the time's all yours. Thanks. Wonderful. Well, this is a topic I love talking about. Um, I don't know that I'm a my heritage expert. How can you be? There's so much there. But I can tell you one thing. I am a very passionate user and particularly of the photographs and all the tools. Uh, I, I say photo discoveries, but we're going to be talking about so much more than that. I just wanted to welcome you with my wonderful paternal grandparents there, Pauline and JB. Aren't they cute? I love those guys. Um, I, as Jeff said, do the podcast. So if you've got one of these things, a smartphone, it's really easy to look up genealogy gems in your um, favorite podcast app or in the app store. And he mentioned Elevenses with Lisa, which is a traditional 11 o'clock break in the morning. And if you could use a break on Thursday mornings, um, we have an awful lot of fun at the Genealogy Gems YouTube channel. You can join us live, be part of the chat, or you can watch the video replay afterward. It's, it's like a webinar, just like we're doing today. And um, this one, episode 15, I wanted to highlight because I had a, a wonderful opportunity to chat with Daniel Horowitz, the genealogy expert at MyHeritage. And that's what that episode was all about. But we do something different every single week. So I hope you'll join us. Photographs. What's not to love? Um, this is, uh, you're looking at a scrapbook that I inherited from my grandmother and so many of the photos that came out of it. I mean, it just brings genealogy alive. And when you think about your family tree online, sometimes it looks kind of like this, doesn't it? I know that they're working on, they're doing different things with the tree over at my heritage. But the main thing to notice here is there's no pictures. And that just, it's okay. It's good, but it's kind of like names and dates. But what a difference when you can put photographs together with these names and these dates. All of a sudden, it brings it alive. It reminds you you're really dealing with uh, in information about real people, uh, real um, lives and feelings and uh, histories of their own, each one so unique and different. And I just, I love that it, photographs do this for us. So who wouldn't want to be able to add more photographs, not only to their photo collections, but to their family tree? And that's one of the things 
that uh, My Heritage does so beautifully. Photos make everything better, don't you think? So in this session, we're going to talk about photo discoveries. How do you find new photos for your family history on My Heritage? And what we're looking at right now, the beauty of colorization, that you can actually colorize your own photos, photos that you find in other locations, and you can enhance these photos. So there, it seems like every time I turn around, there is a new wonderful tool in my heritage to assist us with our photographs. So let's jump into, first and foremost, how can you find photographs that you maybe have never seen before at my heritage? You can do that through their photo discoveries. And let me show you where this is. When you get to myheritage.com, you go under discoveries in the menu. And we see matches by people, matches by sources. We're used to seeing those, but now we see these instant discoveries. So right, we haven't seen the word photo yet. So I want to make sure that you guys know where to find this in the menu system. Um, My heritage is out there finding instant discoveries. It's finding records and um, other family trees, things that are connected to what you're working on. Well, it's also finding photos. Photo discoveries is really, truly collaborative genealogy at its best. We think about the photos that we have, and you can only imagine the families that might be out there who would love to see the photos that you have because their family is connected to yours. And certainly our ancestors mailed each other photographs, you know, swapped them, shared them. Um, So it's so possible that there are ones out there for our immediate ancestors that we've never seen before that somebody else has. So if my heritage can find them, they will try very hard. In the instant discoveries, you've got three different kinds of discoveries. So we have all discoveries. You can look at everything, which if you have a a bit of a family tree out there, that's probably going to be, there's a lot of stuff there to look at. So we can kind of narrow it down. We can go to just person discoveries, or as we're going to do today, photo discoveries only. So under instant discoveries, click on photo discoveries, and that is going to uh, bring you what they have found because they've been looking at all of your smart matches. And my heritage is going to isolate the matches that it's finding with other trees that contain photographs. So it's specifically doing that under photo discoveries and where the fo- corresponding people in your tree, they don't have a personal photo yet. So they, they know for sure, you know, this is a high priority. You're going to want to see a photo of somebody that you have in your tree that you don't yet have a photograph for. My heritage is going to consolidate the discoveries that it's making through this kind of high-tech matching system that it has. It's going to put them into packages of up to 10 photographs. I don't know about you, but I, I'm hoping that there's so many photos that we have lots of packages and that there's a, a real need to be able to put them in groups of 10 because that means you've really got something uh, worthwhile to look at. So it's going to group them together. And and that helps just for your workflow. It's going to make the process of looking through them and processing them and making decisions about adding them to your tree that much faster. Now, the photographs are going to originate only from family sites where the privacy setting for allowing photos to be copied from smart matches is enabled. And this is important to know because it we don't want to get the impression that this is all there is. It may be that through other genealogical activities that you're doing at MyHeritage that you make connections with other researchers and come to find out, yes, they have photos as well, but they've marked theirs as private. So that's why you didn't get them through photo discoveries. So just don't let it lull you into the idea that this is all there is, because certainly there can be other people out there with photos. But it's also letting you know that you can control your privacy as well. So each one of us can make a choice in our account as to whether or not the privacy settings allow for the photographs that we are uploading to be copied and used in the smart matches enabling. Um, Certainly, this is where the real beauty of the collaboration comes from, and this is what generates it. So, you know, I don't know about you, but I'm hoping that lots of people have this enabled and that mine is as well so we can share back and forth. 
So we're going to click photo discoveries. And when we get there, we're in that instant discoveries mode still on this page, but we're looking only at photo discoveries. And here are these batches they were talking about. So batches of 10 photographs in a package. So you can click the view discovery to look at all of them because we can see from the images, we can see four of them, but there are six more yet to look at. So let's click our first discovery button. And here's our photo discovery. Okay, so you can see up at the top, there's a orange button that says you can add all 10 photos to your tree. If you glance through them and say, <clears throat> oh goodness, these are all, you know, my people, wonderful. But I think you're gonna wanna look through each one carefully and make sure that you know, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, who it is and if they truly are a match for your tree. So each photograph includes the name of the family site where it came from. So remember family site, each one of us as a MyHeritage user have a family site. And the our family site on this first photograph, the, it's managed by somebody named Mary Butler and this is her photograph that's attached to that site. So you can click through and you can see that family site you can also see the site manager's name and you can click to talk to that person. We'll talk about that in a moment. Each photo includes additional information. So th this is where you're really hoping that this other researcher is doing their homework. And in fact, as I, the more I have gone through my photo discoveries, it's really been a kick in the pants that I need to get back into my photos and do a better job of editing my titles, getting more information, tagging faces. I mean, all of that helps me and it helps the matching system and other people that I might wanna collaborate with. So each photo is going to include the title of the photo, the date, and I believe the title of the photo, at least by default, is probably <clears throat> how you named your file when you, up, when you uploaded your photograph, but you can edit that. It's gonna have uh, a place if that's been aided, uh, if it's been added, a description if you've added that. Also information about the person who's appearing in the photo. And as we know, sometimes photos have multiple people. So here is um, this person who is managing this site, has uploaded this photo. We can click their hyperlinked name and click the contact button and we can contact other users and communicate directly. I think it's always just really good karma to get out there and say, thank you. Thank you so much for sharing this, for making it public. This means a lot to me. But you could also use this as a mechanism for generating and, and facilitating collaboration with this other user. So you can click there. Here's a photo. Now, remember I mentioned that, of course, photos can have multiple people in them. So the first thing we're going to do, here's a photo of two people, and we need to click the view original photo. This photo is in my batch of 10, and I've, I'm looking through and analyzing each one to see if it's a match. I'm going to click this view fo uh, original photo. That's going to give me the enlarged view, but it also does something else very important. You can see that uh, the title here is Sarah Melinda Williams. There's another little title, John Williams. We need to click through to see what truly the names of each person. Here we go. From their site, the person who uploaded this, I can now see everybody that sh this person has tagged in the photo that's in their tree. So we see that John Williams is her husband. And then we have uh, the woman and what the relationship is. So that enlarged version is worth clicking through, particularly if you have any questions about who's in the photograph, because you're going to learn more information that you can see than, than you can see when you're looking at it as a batch. So by default, all the photographs in a photo discovery will be copied to your tree. What that means is, is that when you first go in, MyHeritage will already have marked all of them ready to go with the orange um, check mark so that with one click of the add these 10 photos, they're done. They're in your tree. So that's by default. As you're going through this evaluation process, you're going to maybe determine that a few of these 
aren't ones that you want. Either they're copies. Sometimes you'll see photographs that are actually just a coat of arms, or it might be a tombstone and you've already got the tombstone. So you want to deselect those before you add them. So we can exclude specific photos. If I think this is not somebody who I need to have a photo of in my tree, I'm going to deselect that, and then they will not be included when I'm adding. When I'm ready to go, everybody else that I've kept selected, I can click to add them all with one swoop. Really, really efficient and easy to do. But you can completely reject a photo discovery. So you'll find that there's this little button, reject this discovery. It's at the bottom of the list of the photographs and you can reject discoveries. And the good thing is they're not gonna be offered again. So it's you don't have to worry about constantly getting barraged with the same kind of photo hints all over and over again, these photo discoveries. Uh, once it's done, it's done. So just be sure, if you're not sure, you could leave it there and, and not make a decision yet. So it's really cool. You've already been finding photos. They're probably already sitting there in your MyHeritage account. You've gone through and evaluated them. You can select them, add, add the ones that you want. What happens after you add a photo discovery? Well, if you have fewer than 50 people in your family tree, you're going to be taken back to your family tree and you'll be able to see the photos that have been added because your tree is not that big. So it's not going to be difficult for them to display that for you to get an overview of what you've added. If you have 50 or more people in your family tree, you'll be taken back to the photo section where all your photos are where you can view the photos that you've added, and you can also click then over from there and go back to your tree if you want to. So just know, depending on the size of your tree, what happens after the adding could be a little bit different. Now, email notifications. So this is really nice because when a new photo is found, you're going to receive this photo discovery notification by email. And it'll be whatever email address that you have associated with your account. Good news is it's kind of a digest form. So they're not going to, you know, hammer you every day with all of these emails. Once a week, you get sort of this digest of all the discoveries that are out there. I love this because sometimes I forget to go check and I love the prompt that, oh, gosh, there's more there to go back and take a look. I have to say, I oftentimes prioritize going and looking at photos before any other discoveries um, because it's wonderful to see those faces uh, looking back at you that maybe you've never seen before. So uh, you'll get these here again just once a week. And two types of instant discoveries. Okay, so you can apply a person discovery to add individuals to your tree in this process. So maybe you're getting a discovery that is um, somebody that you didn't have before. You look at it and you go, oh my gosh, this really is somebody who fits into my tree. You can apply a person discovery and then apply a photo discovery to bring the photos of these individuals into your tree as well. So you really are building out your tree in an exciting way. After applying a discovery to your tree, your tree is going to change, right? So new discoveries will have to be recalculated. So just know that as you find a person discovery and you add that person to your tree, um, it's gonna take a little bit of time for MyHeritage to process it, go out, do the smart matching technology, collect those together in the packages and put them together for you uh, in your photo discoveries. So additional new discoveries, it only takes about 24 hours, but don't expect that to see them instantly. You want to give the, the system a pro, uh, opportunity to really process them and find all of the very best matches that it can. So who can use this amazing feature? Well, uh, Premium Plus and Complete Subscribers, you get unlimited discoveries. And that, to me, this is one of the really big bonuses of being a subscriber is it's going to be out there 24-7 looking for me and finding these and bringing them back to me. Um, so if you are a subscriber or you've thought about being one, you might want to give this a test run because it's a super cool 
benefit of being a, uh, a subscriber. So you have your photos that you've been finding through the photo discoveries, but of course you have photos in your own home collection and you have the opportunity to also kind of give back to the community. And if you enable through the privacy settings that you want to share yours out, you can, but you can use this awesome new tool that they have launched this last year, the colorization of your photos. You can use this regardless of whether or not you're sharing out your photos. And I just think it's it's uh, such an amazing tool. I want to show it to you, kind of see how it works if you hadn't had a chance to try it. Again, subscribers get unlimited access to this. So it's really worth using. Um, you can colorize your black and white photos. This was the first kind of enhancement to photographs that came out from MyHeritage. And it takes your black and white photos that perhaps you've digitized, you've got them on your computer, and you can literally just drag and drop them onto their website. You can upload them through the uploading button, but they have this deep learning technology and it knows how to make the trees green, how, how to colorize faces. And it's just unbelievable. You saw kind of an example of it when we first started out this presentation with that first photograph. And here, here's my great grandparents. So I've had this photo for years, but I have to say it really, uh, is touching to see it colorized. And it's um, so amazing how it can do it so accurately. Is it going to be exactly the color of the dress that she wore? We don't know for sure. We can't know. But notice in the bottom left-hand corner of the colorized photo, we see that little palette icon. And this is really important because as a genealogist, we want to be really honest and really clear and accurate about what it is we're looking at. On the left, you're looking at the original photo. On the right, we're looking at something that's been technologically colorized. And so that little tiny icon lets anybody who you share this with know that this has been colorized. Therefore, we don't know for sure what the color of the flowers on her dress were, for, let's say. Um, but I still think it adds tremendously to the, the, the photograph itself. So let's go colorize a photo. Under family tree, you'll find colorized photos as one of the options in the menu. You can click the upload button. I just tend to do it by, you know, habit. But you can also drag and drop that picture right onto the screen. It'll take a few moments for it to process, run it through the technology. And uh, this is the most exciting part because you're <laughs> waiting to see what it's going to do with it. Look at the difference. Holy smokes. So it's ready to go. I love the fact that they give you different options of how you can share because that's what's so cool about this. This is what's going to grab the interest of your family. Let's click go to my photos because I want to just look at everything I've done so far. Here's the, the last one in the upper left hand corner. That's the one I most recently did. And here we can go back and forth and we can just check the difference and see. It just really makes it pop, doesn't it? It just makes it look more um realistic if you will and it, it, i think also the colorization really helps remind you again that these are real people we can view the full size photo love that this is my husband's great grandfather uh, in the car on the right behind the wheel harry cook and his motor works all the guys that worked for him there is his um son on the right raymond my husband's grandfather we can see that there's a little bit of imperfection in some of the colors, but oh, I didn't even realize before there's a sleigh up there. It looks like it's a sleigh that maybe he built as part of his carriage works. He eventually went into the motor car business uh, as that changed in England. So there might be a few things that you can tell are a little bit off. It, it, it's, it can't be perfect. It's not a, a live person colorizing it, but we can we can change that. Here's that title I mentioned to you. You, if you do this, if you edit those and make them more accurate for other people and when you're sharing, they will thank you. <laughs> you can add the date that you believe the photo is, the place. So while I initially included the place Tumbridge Wells in my file name, um, I'm going to go back and add it to the place field. This just gives me more accuracy in my photos, but it also, it certainly helps people that may find this through photo discoveries. So you can click that at any time and, and share that. And here I'm going to go back, 
make it Harry Cook's Carriage Shop. There we go. And we can tag people in the photos. Click the gear icon. Now, remember we said that there are some things that maybe weren't quite perfect about the colorizing. You can um, take the default settings off and you can alter some of these. So by changing it to manual rendering and moving a slider, then hit the preview and you'll see it um, update. And of course, the share link, that's key. You can share from any photo, get it out to social media. You can also tag these faces. So set the position of each person in the photo, enter their name, and we can grab them right from the tree. So now I've been able to take the photo that I uploaded, did the whole colorization thing, but at the same time, I can take care of getting his picture into my family tree. There he is. So we could go through and we could, um, I don't know the names of everybody in this photograph, but I could certainly add his father, Harry. We can add keywords, additional notes. There's a lot of details here. I really love that they give us so many options for managing our photos. And we have information about that original photo, the size. Uh, you, if you're like me, way back when, when I did some scanning, you know, before I knew better, I wasn't really scanning at large enough um, pixelation. So you might want to go back and rescan some of your photos if you notice they're a little too small or they could be improved. So there we colorized. Here's one, uh, Daniel Horowitz, um, the genealogy expert at MyHeritage shared this with me and I love this photograph. I mean, it's just beautiful um, seeing the colorized version of it. Here are my great grandmother's sisters. I yeah, love that. Here's my husband's father when he was in the Navy. So this is the grandson of the man in the picture from the Motor Works. Here's my grandfather, my mother's side, and his baby sister. Oh, love it. Colorization absolutely brings your photographs to life. Now this is interesting. So uh, I mentioned to you that I do this Elevens is with Lisa YouTube show. It's a live show every Thursday when then there's a video replay and I always publish out all the notes, step-by-step -step instructions for whatever it is we're talking about. In episode three, I shared this photo. Uh, I think this was back in March and one of my wonderful viewers uh, sent it to me and she said, you know, this was really interesting because I'm looking at this photo and I know that that's like, I think it was like her great, great grandparents standing behind the gate. And we were thinking, we were talking about colorization and she was saying it was really eye opening to see what colorizing this photo could do for her. Check it out. So here's that couple and there's another couple in this photograph. And she said, you know, had I not colorized it, I don't know if I would have spotted them again. And that's what color, think of colorization is actually one more tool in your tool belt to help you find just a little bit more potentially in some of these photos that you have. And in fact, as we were talking about it on the show, um, we realized that we spotted there's another person. So things that you don't see in photos that are black and white may absolutely pop right out because look, we've got so much more contrast to work with. So think of the colorization tool, not as only as a way just to enhance them visually, but to really help you uh, learn more about the photo. And don't think of it as only photographs. So one of the things that I've done is I'll run into a, a census record, let's say the original here is on the right. I've been working on my um, Irish family, the Lynches. I'm going to be doing a one hour consultation type of um, research in the next episode this Thursday on Elevenses. And this family, I was looking at this record thinking, oh, it's a little, it's a little muddy. It's a little hard to read. I dropped it onto the MyHeritage site and did the enhancement. And look on the left, how much more uh, sharp and clear it is. This is the new enhancement tool. So we've been talking about colorizing your photos. You can also do this new enhancement. So um, you can make manual adjustments to the photos that you've been colorized, but you can also, I'm gonna show you how you can do this enhancing. Uh, if you wanna access the settings, you want to go to 
under family tree in the menu, go to my photos, select one of the photos that you've already colorized, and we can manually alter this. So remember we said that sometimes we need to make a few adjustments. When you've colorized a photo, you can do that through this gear icon. And now you can um, change them up. So you can see looking at his, what he's wearing, that, that uh, necktie, that, uh, that kerchief, I don't know what you call it, around his neck. Um, it, it's not quite right. He's got some red on his arm. It just got the color a little bit off. So one thing to think about when you're adjusting uh, on the colorized photographs is that uh, only after the photo has been colorized can you make the adjustments, obviously. And it's only through uh, in my photos. So it's definitely an art. It's not a science. You have to experiment with it and see what works best. Uh, the changes that you make in the settings will affect the current photo only. So if you're adjusting manually the settings for this photograph, don't worry that you have somehow altered the settings for all photographs. It's, it's photo by photo. I really find 99, I don't know, 99, but a lot of the time, the default settings are really the best. I've come in and I've tried to adjust it and I think, no, eh, that's not quite right. Um, but sometimes it really can help. So use the slider to select a higher or lower number. Uh, you've got a range of 16 to 96. You can do that on the rendering. But in general, colorization of lower resolution photos look better with a lower rendering number. So when you look at, remember we we're talking about what size the photo is. If it's a lower resolution, you're gonna to go towards the lower end. If it's higher resolution, there's more to work with, you can go higher in the rendering numbers. That's just something to keep in mind. The default model of colorization, the one that my heritage sets, the one that they threw all the science into, it really does seem to work best for most photographs. And keep in mind, because it's an automated system, it's probably never gonna be 100% perfect, clearly. It may be because his sleeve was a little washed out that it will always attempt to put a color there um, and not fill it with the black. But um, you can certainly play with those and see, I, could, I toned it down a little bit. And that was through um, changing these manual settings. I was able to kind of tone it down and, and it, at least it doesn't distract you to see the red on his sleeve as much, but it's still there a little bit. Here, if we um, run this one, remember we colorized it? Okay, well, I can see that there are some issues with a little bit of color. Notice that this guy here, he's, his vest is partially red in some parts and then not. Um, this other guy, his, his colors are a little bit off. So just ring it through, it's very subtle, but I was able to make a few improvements to the colorization. And again, complete subscribers get unlimited colorized photos. This I love this photograph. It was a big kid's birthday party in my husband's side of the family back in Minnesota. And oh my gosh, it just comes to life when you do the colorization. So I mentioned that they have now added enhancement. This is a two kind of two, a two prong approach now to uh, improving your photos. We did the colorization. Now we can do the enhanced photos. You're still going to find that under family tree in the menu. And um, you can also go back and you can go to your own my photos, where it says my photos in the menu. And you can go back and work on a photo that you previously uploaded. So you don't have to start with a brand new upload. You could go back and enhance ones that are already there. But under enhanced photos, we can, again, drag and drop the photo onto the screen and the website just processes it like an app, or we can click the upload photo button. So here's one, I put it through enhancement. It, it really did improve it. It's not hugely dramatic, but it's actually more dramatic when you look at some of the faces. So look at this face. So when you zoom in, that's what how pixelated it can look, but look what it was able to do. It didn't perfectly like get rid of the little tiny marks. It doesn't do that kind of fixing. There are apps that can do that, but it did a beautiful job with overall enhancement and clarity. It, it just kind of blows my mind, but it's so simple that you can just drag and drop them on there. 
if you wanted to, if I really wanted to fix those little tiny white dots, I could download this photograph and I could save it to like Dropbox, on, which I have um, a cloud storage. <clears throat> so if I save it to Dropbox on my um, computer, I will also be able to access that enhanced photo from Dropbox on my phone. From there, I could use a free app like uh, one of my favorites is Adobe Fix, Photo Fix. And that, what that one will do is I can bring this beautifully enhanced photo, which would have taken me way too long in Adobe Fix to do to make it that enhanced. I don't even know if I could have achieved the same results, but I could bring it in and very quickly, Adobe Fix will allow me to fix up those little white spots that were like missing little pieces of, of um, color and fix that right up. So that's another little tool. We can kind of use our tools in conjunction with each other. It's called Adobe Photo Fix. It's a free app. I know it's on Apple, on iPhone. I don't know 100% that it's on Android, but I think it is. I hope for your sake it is. <laughs> All right, here is the colorized version. Notice that at the bottom of your photographs, you also have this comment section. And I hope that you'll look at that as, again, one more tool for collaboration, because um, this is an opportunity for you to tell a little bit more about this photograph and maybe be able to get some feedback from other people in your family. Maybe you've, you know, who are participating in your family site that's on MyHeritage. Um, I put some information about who I think this is and, and which one it was and when he was born, but I'd love to get some ideas from other people who might be able to confirm that. So, um, so many ways that photos can help facilitate the work that we're trying to do. How about this one? So I love this photo. Um, this was on, I don't even know who the people are. This was in my husband's side of the family, but I just love that wagon and the gals hanging off of it. I ran it through enhancing and then I ran it through colorization. And I don't know about you, maybe you'll say in the chat what you think about that. It's, it's pretty cool to see that. Notice again, the bottom left-hand corner of the enhanced photograph, we see now two icons. We're seeing the palette that tells us that we've colorized it. So if we share this, other people will know, oh, okay, this was not color photography. Somebody has manually or <laughs> technologically colorized it. And now we see the second icon, which shows us it's been enhanced. It's like a little magic wand. So um, when this goes out and it's shared, people will know what they're really looking at. And that's important. And this is actually a split screen. I, I love that my heritage lets us do the before and after. Um, these kinds sharing the before and after, which you can download. So you can download the the original photograph. You can download the colorized. When you colorize and enhance, you haven't done anything to the original. That original is still there. It's on my heritage, so you haven't lost that. But you can download the comparison. And I have found that that's one of the, the, the best things to be sharing because that's the real wow factor was people who in your family who have maybe done a little yawn or rolled their eyes when you tried to talk about family history because they're just not into it maybe, share this and all of a sudden you catch their eye. So I love the wow factor of the comparison photos that you can download. So as you can see, my heritage is doing so many new and exciting things in photos. It's helping us discover them. It's giving us a place to store ours, to upload them, to add more details, to enhance our tree through adding the photos to the family tree, um, which really is, I think, inspiring to us as a genealogist. It's giving us a place to improve upon our photos, whether it's through enhancement or colorization or both. I just keep finding myself doing both all the time. Very addictive, very enjoyable. So this is one of my other favorite photos. And sharing out the comparison version, I think is really cool. Um, those are the fabulous photo discoveries at MyHeritage. I know you're gonna have a blast using them. Um, I hope you'll join me this week. I'm gonna be doing this Irish genealogy um, expert session. We are gonna try and bust a brick wall. And here's a teaser, we do a little bit. 
<laughs> I'm so I, I'm having a hard time concentrating on my work and genealogy gems because I'm so passionate about the way this has broken things open for me and and it's been interesting to make contact with other people now who have photos from this Irish family so that's been exciting um, I also have a guide a quick reference guide on my website so if you're interested in just if you're fairly new to my heritage then you might enjoy this quick reference guide it really takes you on a tour shows you what to look for and what the site can do for you I love it and they have been a proud sponsor of my genealogy gems podcast for several years so with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions I can. I'll invite Jeff to come back and maybe find out uh, if he's been colorizing and enhancing photographs. <laughs> yeah, the only problem with all of this, Lisa, is if you had other plans, then you should put, you know, just put those aside because it, it gets addicting. <laughs> you, you upload one and you see how great it is, and then it makes you really want to go and upload everything that you have. Uh, it, yeah, I personally been doing it, and and I think it's incredible technology. And like you said earlier, yeah, you know, my heritage they can they just continue to. I say they, I, I should say we. Um, my heritage just continues to create these new incredible technologies, and and uh, yeah, just love it. Well, Absolutely. and the um, story behind how they've done it, some of, I think the colorization came out of like a weekend hackathon <laughs> kind of a thing where yep. the programmers sat down and, and figured this out. I mean, <laughs> so you put a little time and more energy behind it and it, boy, yeah. they're on a roll now. So yeah. it's pretty exciting. I've been involved in some of those uh, marathons at the actual MyHeritage headquarters. Really? And, and it, it's incredible. It's very intense. They're long days, but it's, it's really neat to see these it just incredible minds at work and yeah this yes. this was the result of that <laughs> well i'm getting oh, just got the chills on my arms again just thinking about it. well lisa i'm going to do a, a couple of door prizes uh, and okay. announcement and then we'll come back to questions by the way uh, with with questions um i'm going to there's some of the questions that you've uh, typed here that i that i see that are maybe a little bit beyond the scope of this webinar. And so what I want to do, is, meaning some of them are a little, little technical, I'm going to drag this monitor. Okay, you can see my browser now. If you didn't know about this, this is a really good place, and I'm going to put that link in your chat, everyone. This is the, the MyHeritage users group on Facebook. And so when you go there, um, I'm already a member of it so there will probably be uh, a little button on here that says join group something like that and uh, and that's where you go if you have a question and so maybe if your question doesn't get answered here today go over here and ask your question there and there's 12.6 thousand other members that are anxiously awaiting to help you out all right let's go here now so our next and now this is neat our the the next my heritage specific webinar will be on working with different family tree views on my heritage and we will actually have uh the developer of these new views the the pedigree view the fan view i mean they're just beautiful uh, he's actually going to be here with us uh, uh that day so uh, go up here to this website and go and register for that now we're going to do a couple of uh, door prizes first uh, th so the store prize the one year my heritage complete plan that the com it's the complete plan that allows you like lisa was saying to have unlimited access to the colorization and the enhancing and uh and <laughs> personally that alone makes it worth it to me because yeah it really is incredible uh so this complete plan uh, unlimited size for your tree, unlimited storage for your photos, and so on. Plus, you get the unlimited access to the 12-plus billion historical records. Uh, which I uh, <laughs> I don't I don't know, Lisa, if you saw it. I I wrote a blog article last Friday, and uh, and and this this was. This is so good, Lisa. I've got to pull it up. I need to show this. I want to see. What um, are we doing? What? Well, what I heard, so up at news.legacyfamilytree.com, what I heard <laughs> from my kids, uh, let's go to right here, genealogy competition leads to ice cream party. So uh, kids have been at home for months, and uh, mm -hmm. 
and I heard the TV on. I heard some kind of, you know, fighting between kids. And so I had this idea. Let's go into uh, my legacy software. And I, the, legacy has this little option that will print out blank lines for when you have missing information. So I printed this one piece of paper right here. And I gave it to each of the four kids. And I said, go. And uh, I turned it into a competition where... Uh, you know, whoever found the most, you know, we'd have an ice cream party. And, and, uh, now Can I, I live at your house. No, I can't remember why. Oh, this is why. <laughs> this is why I was telling you this. Uh, Caitlin, my, the youngest of the four kids, she was actually the winner. Look at all these things that she found. And she found wow. all of these at my, at my heritage with the, with the data, uh, collection up there. And this one right here was my favorite of all of them. Uh, and, this was for, let me go back up to this page right here, for Clarence J. McCall. Um, we, she found his, uh, it's like 1922 high school yearbook. And uh, like you showed here today, uh, well, the yearbooks back then were, you know, they're black and white, but it had automatically colorized uh, Clarence. So first of all, we've never yes. seen a picture of Clarence. Uh, and then when we did... It actually showed us in color, and the person right next to him was his sister. And uh, so, yeah, the reason I'm showing this is because that data subscription is, it's getting better and better, and especially with this yearbook collection. Uh, yeah, really neat. Okay, I'm going to, let's go out to, and find our, I'm going to give the, the one-year membership here to Bobby Jacobs. Bobby, I hope you're jumping up and down and excited, and you're going to go and tell everybody. So congrats, uh, Bobby. We're next going to go to uh, Genealogy Gems Premium Membership. Lisa, tell us about this and where we would uh, find access to it, and then I'm going to announce a winner. You bet. Well, uh, I have my website, genealogygems.com. It's got the free podcast, and I do articles and stuff. But we do have a premium membership, and that's all the members have access to all the classes that I teach. They're on video. There's downloadable handouts. So there's over 50 classes. Uh, there are many classes on there on DNA by Diane Southern. And then there's a premium podcast. So a lot of people come to it because they enjoy the free show and they want to get more exclusive podcast episodes. So this is a value of $49.95. It's good for a whole year. And one of your lucky winners is going to get access to all the classes and the premium podcast and everything that comes with it. And in fact, when we do 11s is with Lisa on Thursdays, I always have um, a downloadable step-by-step -step handout that's just for premium members. So once you become a member, you can go back and you can download those. Okay. Your newest member, Lisa, is Marcel Blaze. Marcel, congrats. Oh, congratulations. I <laughs> hope you're excited too. All right. I'd love to win something like this someday, Lisa. Well, okay. <laughs> okay. Here's my question slide. So, uh, let's, and yeah, thanks. Uh, well, Marcel says, uh, great job from the My Heritage team. Thanks, Marcel. Okay. Um, Lisa, when, if I ask you a question, you say, uh, oh, that'd be better over on the Facebook group. Yeah, just go ahead and, and, uh, and tell us that. You um, oh, well, let's go to <laughs> Joe. The first question has to do with, uh, Elevenses. Um, What's the easiest way, this is from Joe, what's the easiest way to get to the Elevens' uh, class? Ah, good question. Is it possible for me to share my screen? Oh, sure. Let me give you, I like the control, Lisa, but I'll give it up to you. I know. <laughs> All right. Um, so if we go to my website, genealogygems.com, I think this is the easiest way to get there. And you go, you can go under podcast. Or video, because some people think of Elevens as uh, a podcast when really it, it's not. It's it's a video series. I hope I don't know if my go to. Oh, there we go. Click Elevens is with Lisa, and here's a landing page. So, the current one that's about to be coming this week that's going to be here, and you can click this little button set reminder. And as long as you're logged in with your free Google account. Uh, over at YouTube. So even if you don't use Google for your email, if you have a free Google account and you're signed into Chrome or YouTube, this will set it for you. Uh, you can do that. Down below, here's all the episodes. 
Okay, so that's what we've done so far. We've been busy. We have lots of really cool, totally different topics. But when you click on set reminder, it's going to take you to my YouTube channel. And you can always find this at youtube.com slash genealogy gems. And just click set reminder. What this will do is 10 minutes before the show, you'll get an email to your email account, whatever is associated with your Google account. And it will say, she's going to go live. And you can watch live. Here on the right are all the participants, people who are there live. We're all chatting with each other and having a great time. If by chance you miss it live because it's not a, you know, a convenient time where you live, you can come back here and come to the landing page and you can click through any of the archived ones will have not only the video, but the show notes. So you can watch the video. Oh, my face is so big there. Yay. Um, you can watch the video from here and you can also scroll down and get all the instructions step by step with pictures and everything. It's not your and face. I think that's I even big. saw some Elevens' viewers in our chat here today yeah. on the webinar. Yeah, so maybe somebody will it. vouch for you and say it's worth <laughs> watching. <laughs> Lisa, it's not your face that's big, it's your smile and, and your heart. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right. Okay, so I've got a couple of business type questions. So I'll switch that back over here. You mm -hmm. just tell me when you want me to switch it back to you. Um Sherry, I didn't mention when the when the next my heritage webinar is and well that's because i didn't uh i couldn't remember it and i didn't have it on that slide if you go right here and i'll put this link in your chat to all of you and then i'll scroll down just a little bit here uh so here's today well and there so there's some in other languages i'm not gonna go to those right here august 11 tuesday august 11 that's jeff that's jeff's uh birthday week and anniversary week i love that week um, so that's, that's, uh, there's your answer, Sherry. And then Carnice, uh, how do you get the video of today's webinar? Well, I'll just head up to the, just the main web page, familytreewebinars.com and scroll down to the what's new section. And, uh, that's, that's how it'll just show up right here and check out this one, uh, Carnice. Our webinar from last Wednesday, There's it's been viewed more than 23,000 times so far. That was a really good one. Okay, so let's go back to here. I hope that helps Carnese. So, uh, Lisa, you answer this, or um, I, I've got my screen where I could show it also, but what do you think about Terry's question, um, who says, will you show us how to get a headshot for the pedigree chart from like a group photo that we have in our collection? Do you know how to do that at uh, at MyHeritage? Uh, I have not done that, so I'll leave that in your capable hands. Okay. Well, I don't know how capable, but I <laughs> after Terry after Terry asked, I was playing with it over here. So okay. Um, so here I am on my tree, and I just went uh, to my family tree, and um, what she's wondering, where's my little? Oh, here's my zoom button down here. So zoom, zoom, zoom. So this is the pedigree view. It's kind of a newer view. Um, mm -hmm. And which I, which I love. And there's these other views up here. Uh, so how do you? So if I have a big group photo and I want to just tag the face in the photo, so what I did is I went up to Family Tree and I went to my photos and then it opened up. Um, oh, that's not what it opened. So here we go. And I go to my photos and so here comes the the display of all of the the photos that are here in my. Um, in my all media and then I click on this one so here's a group photo so it's a four generation one. and look at that I just love that color mm -hmm. okay so um, what I noticed here Terry is when I when I hover over a person's face my heritage has automatically detected that that is a face and so when I here I'll just I'll try it here with dad so I'll click on it and I just start typing his name and it searches through everything and I'll click here and so now I mean that's all that I had to do now that photo is now linked to him so I'll click on grandpa here and I just start typing and and it will do the oh, same so we thing did do this in the presentation I was thinking something else when you asked that question but yeah we did that with Raymond in that photograph from England yeah and yeah. it's so easy because it's right there on the photos yeah um so I think I think maybe the second part of Terry's question then. So since I've 
I've now tagged this like you did show, Lisa. Mm -hmm. um, how would I get that to show up as that picture that shows up on his pedigree? And I think yes. that I'm I'm not all the way clear about, but I think <laughs> we're going to do watch Jeff and watch Lisa live here is what we're actually doing. Well, since you added him and it pulled yeah. the name from the tree, shouldn't it automatically be there? Well, so I already had one for him before. And okay. so I'm wondering, can I replace this? And I think we call it the, this is the profile picture. So mm -hmm. I'll, I'll, I'll click here. That opens that. That's not what I, I would try to, I'm trying to get this side to open up. Here we go. Um, so I'll click on dad's name. And if I click oh, here, yeah. edit photo, that's just, now watch this, uh, Terry. I think this is something else that could have helped you. So when you have that big group photo there, you see how, let's just pretend that this is a group photo. And if you zoom in on that one head in that group photo and you can just kind of move it around, um, I, I think that becomes that, uh, that profile picture. And if you click on clear profile photo, that would allow you to select a different one. So I don't know. For me, Lisa, I just like to click around and see what happens. I'm, I'm not going to do any like permanent damage and speaking oh, of exactly. uh, yeah, speaking of permanent damage uh, there's a few questions in here that said um what if i don't like the those color changes or the enhancement changes that that is done here uh did you now you and you probably yeah. mentioned it while i was looking at the chat um does it uh, tell us or remind us about uh, that it's making these changes to a copy of the original and you can always you always have the original is that true Exactly. So when you do the initial colorization or enhancement, uh, in a sense, you've made a second copy of it. You, you know, so you've up, upload the first one. It says, okay, here's your enhanced version. If you don't like it, you can remove that, but it's, it doesn't change the original photo that you did. Good. And in fact, if you click that gear icon and you remember we were talking about manually being able to alter it, maybe fix it up a little bit more, get a little more accurate. You can also undo that as well. Okay. So the good news is, is that um, you you don't uh, alter that original. I think that answers what he was oh, asking. Oh yeah, right? absolutely. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, many other questions, and I'm sure that you talked about it too. But this is you click here, and you click download, mm -hmm. and and I yes. love this. So that's where you yes. download the original, or the now I love. Download. I love looking at the comparison one. That's um, my favorite. Oh, I know. So, so yeah. Uh, any, so all those of you that are asking, um, can I download these? Can I share them? Well, so I just downloaded the comparison, and I'll click on it here, and and oh, it opened on my other monitor. Let's move it over, and so it shows the before and the after, and so now mm -hmm. that is on my computer, right? And Lisa, I can email that to someone now, or I can add it to my Facebook or whatever I want to do with it. Exactly. And it's that sharing, I think, that th these comparison ones really grab the attention of the family. And uh, yeah, no, that's beautiful. Yeah, I love that one where uh, your black and white one where when you colorized it, it, you could see those totally new people in that picture. What new that, people? That, yeah, who knows? Yeah. Maybe there's somebody in that forest back there. <laughs> I know. Well, good. That's neat. Um, okay, so we answered that one, that one, answered that one. Good heavens, we're... Uh, Oh, so what do you think? Here's an interesting question from Deanne. Uh, she says, are we assuming that everyone wore black, white, and gray in the day? It seems that when these are colorized that all those men in the auto shop were all wearing the exact same color. Or is it just not really feasible for this colorization process to really know what color they actually wore that day? Well, you know what's interesting? Look at your, I don't know if that's your great-great-grandfather. Great you know, his jacket was not done red, but the striped shirt below was. Huh. So I think yeah. to a certain extent, this technology seems to be able to anticipate when we see this grayness, if you will, this gradation of gray, yeah. that, that may more likely be a blue or a red. But you're right. In many cases, it will kind of default to a very kind of nondescript yeah, dark gray yeah, yeah. or that. Kind of, and, and red tends to be fairly predominant, too. I wouldn't be surprised if we see uh, as time goes by that we get more and more control over this as well. You know, yeah. they they didn't when they first launched colorization, you couldn't 
manually edit it. Yeah. And so now you can. I can only imagine what they'll be able to do in oh, the yeah. future. So at least another little surprise, which I just love this. When you go underneath the picture and you click, it shows who the face is in the picture. I'm going to click on my great, mm -hmm. great grandfather. When you, when you zoom in on the black and white, the unaltered one, I mean, that's what you get. But with my heritage, <laughs> look yes. at that. That's just like, how does it do it? That's just amazing. I haven't actually checked, but I almost wonder if they're increasing the, the pixels, the resolution. Yeah. Cause it's true. When you have a black and white, you scan it. And if you really zoom in, it does start to look muddy like that. Yeah. But no, these finished ones are beautiful. <laughs> I love it. Um, that's so cool. Well, we're getting so many. <laughs> So, so many fun comments in here. Um, yeah, but at this point, most of them are comments. They're just saying, hey, they're enjoying our our live demos here, Lisa. Uh, <laughs> hey, we, we all learn. People always ask me, oh, oh well, how yeah. did you learn? You know, don't be afraid to just click and hack and try it. Like Jeff says, you can't break anything. Yep. There are no... Uh, technology police watching your back, you know, that's really, I spend probably gobs and gobs of hours doing that, but that's really how you learn and you oh, get yeah. comfortable with moving around and maneuvering the new tools. Yep. Totally agree. Well, we're, we're almost to the end of the hour here, Lisa, but what about Lori who asks, she says, would we include the source of the photograph in its comments section? I was just looking here. And I see that there's this notes section, and and maybe maybe uh, you know someone else it does wonder where did Jeff find this photograph? Yes. Would there be value to I me like adding to use something the notes here? Section. Oh, you go right. Okay. Mm hmm Because oftentimes I can literally just copy and paste my source that I had in in another location and put it in there because I obviously had already had this photo, so. Putting it there, I think, is a great place okay. versus doing it in the comments. That's more for collaboration. And while we have some source information at the top of the photo, which is the title, the location, and the date, um, we still want more specifically how you obtained it. And yeah. that I would put that in, in the notes. In the notes, okay. And down here in the comments, you would probably, for this picture, you, would, you might just say, what a great looking... <laughs> group of boys well you would yeah <laughs> i'm gonna do that just see what okay really that's awesome okay everybody <laughs> i think this tree is private so i don't know if anyone else would go see that <laughs> well lisa any uh this has been fun entertaining educational and all of that but uh any final thoughts before we say goodbye uh, none. Just thank you so much for inviting me. It, like I said, it, this is one of my favorite things to talk about. And um, I, I always enjoy my time here at Legacy. And uh, thank you so much. Okay. And th well, thank you, Lisa. It's been uh, it's been good. Glad we uh, were able to share part of our day with you. And uh, the same for all of you out there. Thanks, everyone, for sharing part of your day with us. And uh, we will see you next time. Bye, everyone. Bye, Lisa. Thanks Bye. so much.